Soft rock and hard chords. Name a more iconic duo. On today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you guys how to play the big and expensive chords to What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers. Kids and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wake Shop. Here's your soft rockin' buddy, Uncle Ben. Today we're going to be talking about how to play the super cool chords in one of my favorite songs from the soft rock heyday of the late 70s. It's What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers, featuring everybody's favorite floofy haired man on vocals, Michael McDonald. So just a little forward before we get started, this isn't like an ultra accurate, you know, note for note transcription of the piano part arranged for guitar or anything like that. This is more of just an idea of what I would play chord wise if I was playing this with a cover band. Or maybe if you're like an acoustic singer songwriter kind of guy that wants to add this in your set, this would be a good way to do it with some cool finger picking and that kind of thing. But yeah, just kind of use this as a framework to build your own ideas on. And as always, full tabs and charts are available on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitar. Search for hashtag Weekend Wake Shop 235. Find the tabs, learn how to play it, then upload a video of yourself softly rocking through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wake Shop. Yes, that's right. Wank shop. And of course, if you like what you see here on my channel and want to dig into some more bonus lessons and downloadable tabs and stuff like that, be sure to support me over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash guitars. This song features some extremely cool chord work, and for all these, I'm going to be calling out fret numbers from bottom to top, okay? So like, for example, the first chord is going to be spelled out as four, nothing, four, three, two, nothing. I'll put those on screen as well so you can follow along, but just remember, I'm always counting these off from low E to high E. The song has four distinct sections to it. Let's start off by learning the intro, which is the same thing as the verse. <laughs> The first chord here I'm thinking of as an A flat 11. You know, I'm not getting all the notes that an 11 chord has, but that's kind of, again, the sum total of harmony that's going on right here. To play it, what you gotta do is to play the fourth on the E, nothing on the next string, fourth on the D, third G, second B, and nothing on the high E. So it's just those four notes. Four, skip, four, three, two, skip, okay? Now the next chord right here, all that we're gonna do is move the bass note, which is currently right here in A flat, we're gonna move it down here to the second fret, to G flat. So all that changed was the bass. And you can see I'm using my thumb to do that, so that way my grip is two, skip, four, three, two, skip. You could use your first finger for that too, if you're more comfortable with that, but I recommend getting and using the thumb. It's really handy for occasions like this. And then the chord after this is a D flat over F chord. So this is a D flat triad with its third, the F note, being played as the bass. And uh, again, I'm using my thumb for that. First, nothing, three, one, two, nothing is your grip here. Four note chord. Those are your first chords of the verse. 
After this, I come in with this E flat minor nine. Now that's a voicing that I don't think the piano really uses in this part, but I just really like how it sounds. You can make it something more straightforward if you wanted to. But I like the sound of that nine in there. I think it sounds really cool. So this grip here is nothing, six, four, six, six, nothing. After this, you're gonna play an A flat 13 chord. So what I've got going on right here is four, skip, four, five, six. I love those chords. I think they sound so, so nice. And then after this, you're going to play a B flat minor 7. This is a good one finger grip, or you could use your thumb. But either way, what you're going to have is 6, skip, 6, 6, 6, the number of the beast, skip. So that section is gone. Now, after this, we get a really mysterious chord before we start this whole thing over again. This is an A7 flat 5, or an A7 altered chord. You could think of it as. And again, this grip is five, which is using my thumb. Uh, skip, five, six, four, skip. And that is a spicy meatball right there. And that is the verse. So that is the intro, and that's also the verse of the song as well. The only thing that changes is the very last time through the verse. Instead of doing the B flat minor 7 to A7 alt chord, you're just going to do two of those B minor 7s. So you can say the last time through the verse will sound like this. Then just stay there. Next we're going to learn the second section of the verse. So this part is pretty simple, it's just two different chord grips going back and forth, and it's got to be starting off on a little modification of that B minor 7 chord that you ended the verse on, the one that's all here on fret number 6. Now in order to kind of uh, mimic the keyboard part a little bit, I started adding in this E flat note, G string fret number 8, like this. So to start with, my grip is 6, skip, 6, 8, 6, skip, okay? I guess you could call it like a B flat minor 7 sus4 chord, you know, so we don't have the third in there, so I'm thinking of it as sus4. But basically what you got to do is go back and forth between that and your just regular all six B flat minor 7. Okay, so that's 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 1, 2, and 3, 4. Notice right there on beat number 4 of that measure, I changed my grip here to an A7 chord. 5, skip, 5, 6, 5. And again, that happens on beat number 4 of that measure. So it sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's just to kind of transition over to the next part. This is kind of like an A flat 7 sus 4 to an A flat 7 kind of sound. Now again, what I'm playing here is I've got 4, skip, 4, 6, 4. That's the sus part of this, so. Then what you gotta do is just basically move the G string note here down a fret to five. That's a regular A flat seven chord. So again, my grip is four, skip, four, five, four. Okay? And again, just oscillate between those two chords. All that's changing is that G string, that's all. Next we get to the pre-chorus of the song, which is full of things that will make you say, <laughs> So this starts off with kind of a jazzy 2-5-1 progression in D-flat that then has this cool little turn around at the end that's really strange and hard to play. It's got to start off with that E flat minor 9 voicing that we used earlier. That skip, 6, 4, 6, 6, skip, okay? After this, we're going to play A flat 13. We used that chord earlier too. 4, skip, 4, 5, 6. And then this guy right here. D flat major 7, add 9. I love this chord. I use it all the time. Some people think of this as the 
the John Mayer chord, you know? But this grip right here, what it's gonna be is skip, four, three, five, four. Okay? Skip, four, three, five, four. Fingering I'm using there is really important. Second, first, fourth, third. Just like that. Makes that grip a lot more playable. And then you play this really weird turn around here at the bottom. Now, these chords are pretty tricky to play. Again, I'm using my thumb here on the second chord to get that bass note moving around. The first one that you're gonna play right here, I'll tell you, there's kind of a couple different ways you could think of it. I'll show you the grip first. Seven, skip, six, seven, seven, okay? Now that chord on its own, you know, if I just walked in and somebody was playing this chord, I would assume it was like a B minor with a six in it. One of my favorite, like, gypsy jazz kinds of sounds, you know? But I think in reality, what this is, is it's an inversion of a A flat minor seven flat five chord. It's the same notes, but with the B in the bass. So you could kind of look at it as an A flat minor seven flat five, or A flat half diminished chord, with its flat third in the bass. That is a mouthful. Either way, that's how you do it right there. And you're just on here for a split second, because next what you're gonna do is go to a B flat seven chord. Which again, my grip there is six, skip, six, seven, six. Those chords go by fast. So I get this. After this, play the E flat minor nine, A flat 13. And then you're gonna groove on B flat minor seven again here for a second. And again, that is our all sixes grip here. Six, skip, six, 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 okay? Before we move to this. This is a G minor seven flat five, or a G half diminished chord. And how I'm playing that here is three, skip, three, three, two, okay? Three, skip, three, three, two. So your pre-chorus should be something like this. B flat minor seven. And that leads us to the last section here, which is the chorus. Michael McDonald! This starts off on a F sharp minor seven chord. It's gonna be using the same grip you've been using for B flat uh, minor seven up here, just on the second fret instead. So I'm gonna be playing the two, skip, two, 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 skip. Okay, I'm just kind of doing that Latin kind of groove. The next chord here is a B11. Really easy change from the last chord. All you gotta do here is to play uh, nothing, two, 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 nothing. You can do that with four fingers, you can do it with just your first finger like I'm doing, but it's just the middle four strings on fret two. Pretty easy stuff. Next up we're gonna have an E major seven chord, which I'm playing up here in the seventh position by playing uh, nothing, seven, nine, eight, seven, nothing. But probably if you're playing this on like an acoustic guitar or maybe an electric with really high action and big strings or something, you might want to play it down here instead. Which is skip, skip, two, four, four, four. I chose this one just because it sounds a little fatter and warmer than that does, you know? So you got your E major seven. And then you get down here to a C sharp minor seven chord, which is nothing, four, six, four, five, nothing, okay? So I got from E major seven, C sharp minor seven. And what I'm doing is I'm tagging that lick that the, the keys and bass and everybody plays. Because I think that's just kind of an iconic part of the tune. I wouldn't want to leave that out. I'm just doing octaves, A, B, C, C sharp. So I'm playing that by playing the open A and second G, two A, four G, three A, five G, four A, six G. Okay? It'll we'll come out like this. So there you go guys, a Yacht Rock classic to add to ye old songbook. Bust that one out and 
impress your stepmom or something. And I'll say too, if you found this lesson really interesting and want to learn more, you know, tunes with soft sounds and extremely difficult chords, I recommend learning as much stuff as you can from this era of music. You know, get into some Steely Dan, get into some like Little River Band and stuff like that. There's a lot of these bands that have, you know, again, that yacht rock kind of sound that have a surprisingly deep vocabulary of harmony. And you can learn so much cool, you know, chord stuff and harmony stuff by learning their tunes. So if you dug this, don't stop, get into more. Thanks a ton for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new lessons coming at you every single week. Ring the bell for notifications every time I put up another slice of fried gold. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And don't forget to support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. If you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email. Ben Eller Guitars at gmail.com is where you can reach me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again so much for watching. It's been fun, but it's about time for this ship to depart. So, until next time, let's click in. More picking.